Yay, super smooth. <laughs> super smooth way. I was digging uh, the intro. Uh, <laughs> We're grooving. Oh, the intro's been there for a while, but for ones that actually went right with no mistake on that front, it feels like ages since I've done one of these, and it technically has. So I have one yet. This is another live show collaboration on the Broken Meeple. You're not, you know, it has been a little while, I must admit, but in the summer, a lot of people do other things. <laughs> they don't want to spend half the sunshine days or evenings and that rabbiting with me about board games. So, you know, trying to get stuff arranged and obviously i've had a lot to do as well i had my yorkshire dales trip and work's been crunching me as well but now there should be some more stuff going on of course including tonight so <laughs> cheers for turning up for that of which i got ryan and bethany returning because i didn't scare them away the last time so clearly they fancy the second go <laughs> i don't know what possessed you <laughs> yeah i don't know last time it was just uh it was a it was a blast and let's do it again why not you were sleep deprived last time, and that was hilarious. <laughs> That's right. Our time difference uh, made it uh, hard on you. <laughs> well, the time difference is always it, but I mean, it's still only the evening here. Uh, I'm noticing that your camera is kind of a little bit on the laggy side, like we're sort of getting you in audio form mainly. We'll see if that clears up as time goes on or whether you're able to sort it. But yep, because unless, unless we're going to get like the Stop audio here. book version of your list, that's the main thing. <laughs> so, yeah, that's looking good now. Well, certainly a lot better. We'll see how we'll see how things go. Um, I mean, it could be even my side. I mean, I've got like a like gale force wind outside as well. So who knows what will happen? But we'll just carry on and see how it goes. So for those who aren't aware, especially after the last time, rather than me rabbit on about who I've got as a guest, I think it's better to let the guests explain for themselves. So Ryan and Bethany, who are you? <laughs> Uh, yeah, we are Ryan and Bethany. We uh, we're actually today celebrating our third year anniversary of, of reviewing games. Uh, we we like unfortunately every type of game. <laughs> it seems <laughs> like there's not a type of game that we uh, have shied away from, except for maybe like war games or miniature games. Yeah. But uh, under the under the board game specific umbrella, boy, we'll we'll try anything. Yeah, <laughs> uh, we've got a couple of a four year old and an eight year old. We love gaming with them as well. And several months from now, we'll see them pop up on our channel when we talk about a kids game. And we kind of use the videos as a way to chronicle us um, <laughs> attempting to be healthy people. <laughs> yes, yeah, we've been on a weight loss journey, specifically me, for, for well for three years, and um, I've had ups and downs, but it's always fun to talk about and and kind of reengage as as time goes on. A little bit of accountability there. Yeah. <laughs> As you're trying to do, but that bar means they've got their own channel, Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. So, what started you actually recording vids? Well, yeah, it was it was it was the weight loss thing. It was every time I lost a pound, I was going to make a video. Uh, I was going to uh, review a game off of our shelf, and so uh, it was a really cool. This? Well, <laughs> well, well, we deviated from that. That's yeah. the key: is I gain weight, so then I can lose more weight, so then I can <laughs> review more games. <laughs> I've never no, thought we, I've tried uh, that. <laughs> <laughs> we we rebranded and changed our name and changed our philosophy a little bit but we still at the, you know at yeah. the core want to keep on talking about that and, and keeping that a uh, something that we, we strive for even if we don't necessarily succeed and we talk a lot about just other aspects of health as well and not just weight loss yeah. but mental and emotional health is, yeah. is, is something that not everyone talks about and um yeah 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 give me a feel <laughs> on the yeah. mental health i can i yeah. can yeah i can get behind you on the med on the mental health front that's for certain <laughs> I say, yeah. hello, Kabuki. Thanks for coming along. I uh, hope you know, I know we're getting some people starting to come along. Uh, interesting how this will work, actually, because it's the first time I've done it on a Monday night. I'm used to doing this on a Saturday, so it'd be interesting if anybody's like fresh out of work and decided, you know what, I need to do on a Monday evening, watch something about board games. <laughs> That's the hope. We'll see. <laughs> but that by means hashtag support small creators. Give them a look. Give them a subscribe. I already have. You need to as well. Uh, and yep, check out some top tens and reviews, particularly if you're into two player perspectives, because that tends to be the focus point for you, isn't it? Yeah, especially, it, you know, it's easy. Yeah, <laughs> as, yeah uh, for as obvious the reasons. Pandemic. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we haven't touched a lot of party games recently, but yeah. uh, you know, as things are opening up now a little bit more, you know, we're starting to game a little bit more outside of our little small bu bu bubble. And... and our eight year old can play a lot of games now, so we can get her in now that she can play. That's not true. She actually beats me at a lot of games, so she's <laughs> a lot more competitive than I give her credit for. Yeah, so yeah. two players is definitely where we game the most, but hopefully that'll expand soon as things go on. Yeah. That's always good. 
Hello to Lillian and hello to Aegis. Aegis, sorry, you've uh, <laughs> turned up as well and hopefully we'll get some more in as on top. So, yeah, again, going with the Patreons who basically gave me a giant list of top 10s for me to follow, which I've been trying to do on my solo ones, but also with the collaborations as well. Although, I'm... <laughs> I don't, I'm glad I'm doing this list, but also not glad. <laughs> this is a top 10 small slash indie publishers. It's a Patreon request. It is Ryan and Bethany's choice to do this particular <laughs> list, because I always let the guests choose the list. But you couldn't have picked a harder one off the list, I don't think. Yeah, we don't regret it at all. No regrets. <laughs> yeah, this, this was a challenge. This was tough, because I tried to put the word out as to what constitutes a small publisher in indie and there's a lot of different ways that you can go about it and i don't think anybody has a definitive reason or definitive guide to say this means you're small we've had everything from the turnover to how many people are in the company to how many games they've made to how much impact they've had you know do they use kickstarter or not are they part of asthma day is it all sorts of different <laughs> reasons oh believe me i had to make certain none of mine were on as in the asthma day group that's all right it's just yep it's probably my side it's uh saying that the wi-fi is a little bit weird but like i say <laughs> if it gets connection issues people know that i'll be back so that's all good <laughs> but yeah we this was just really hard i mean how how have you defined small we we looked at a couple of things you know we excluded some companies that we thought were small in terms of resources but maybe they made a lot of games for instance so uh, we excluded some of those. There were some that we thought that were had um, a, a small number of games published, but they had a, a big impact in terms of sales or, or splash in the market. And we, we still put in a couple that were probably borderline to some people. It's hard to tell because everyone's had their own, their own parameters. Um, so we just wanted to focus on some ones that we thought were were underground, or at least we 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 liked them enough to bend the rule <laughs> yeah we really don't know how we made the list we started with 20 <laughs> games and just kind of crossed them all off for companies yeah. yeah 20 companies and then kind of eliminated them for various reasons until we had the the, the five that we liked the best yeah i mean we would eliminate some and for that some reason we would choose a different one so obviously we like <laughs> it was it was very this, difficult this became hard i think it's very it is going to be very subjective oh, yeah. as well there is no strict definition and with mine, I, I sort of thought, all right, how many games have they done? There's a good starting point. I haven't bothered to look up turnover or any financial information because for starters, I've had a nine hour day uh, at work and I'm kind of like done with financial information. <laughs> <laughs> We're in crunch deadline at the moment and it's just these, those last seven days and tomorrow is like, going to be hell. But the I'm done with fire. So I thought I'm not going to base you on financial stuff. So we're kind of looking at number of games, size of games, size of like, like people. If I know how many people actually work for them, that's quite a good indicator because there are a couple that I was looking at where it's like anything from one to like seven people. And it's like, that's not big. You know, even yeah. Portal has quite a big team at the moment. And obviously a lot of the other ones like Fantasy Flight and Days of Wonder and that will have infinitely bigger teams. Uh, and in some way, I also kind of figured, well, when I go to Essen, how big's their booth? Because <laughs> you can always tell some of the larger publishers, of the ones that are like the large publishers are the ones with the biggest booths. Because mm -hmm. they can afford it. You know, that's Days of like, Wonder and... That's well, a great criteria. Well, plus, uh, you know, <laughs> they can afford really that, good. you know. Yeah. And also, in terms of markets, too. So, like, maybe we looked at some ones that were, like, maybe not so big in the in the US market but maybe they're huge in like the like the the Tokyo market or the the you know, the European market. Yeah. So that just it was it was interesting so I had to narrow this down. Yeah, cuz I, I just feel like last time I went to Essen is like okay, right, how big is Queen Games? It's like oh yeah, their booths like, like half the room. <laughs> so it's like yeah, okay, they're big. But then if you're just a small desk or a couple of desks and not much else, it's kind of like all right. You're probably not that huge then, because it really is a financial money sink in order to get yourself a decent sized booth. So it kind of works. Um, just to explain to that, who's uh, who's Tabitha? <laughs> oh, that's my sister. <laughs> Hi, Tabitha. <laughs> <laughs> 
Ah, welcome to the stream, Tabitha. <laughs> yeah, you got you've got moral support. So, so whether that whether that means she's gonna like love your choices or rag on your choices or depending on how often she games with you, not know what you're on about, is it? We'll have to see. She won't know what we're talking about, but I appreciate the support. <laughs> she's a gamer in in training. <laughs> in training, we'll get her there. That sounds like sounds like my relatives. Yeah, and it's like it's a it's a hard training regime, but yeah. So as I say chat can happily go at us if they don't think any of these are small we got our own criteria it's a nightmare i've looked up web <laughs> and stuff and it i think really at the end of the day nightmare. we're just going to go with it we are just going to go with it and see what happens so uh all right well without further ado top is a top five not top 10 i know the original thumbnail did say 10 but it's like no these were meant to be fives for a time reason so <laughs> we'll go with it not to mention actually if i think i did 10 i just think i would have struggled to make the list because it got to a point where i'm like <laughs> Okay, I've run out of small publishers. I'll get. I don't know. It's like ah, I'm glad we restricted it to five at this point. Oh well, let's carry on then and get started. So guests go first as always. Uh, before anything, did you realize I didn't say anything? I remembered to not talk during the little five thing. Really proud of myself. Okay, Great job. carry on. We'll Thank you. That. Thank you. Well, the, the, uh, mic's, the mic's <laughs> muted during those anyway, so it doesn't matter. Yes, yes. I was just talking to all of them. <laughs> oh, look, there, there it is. Yeah. Flashpoint there. Yeah. yeah. All right, the so. Magic, uh, <laughs> magic behind the scenes. <laughs> uh, okay, so our number five is, uh, we put it there because of, it's probably a little borderline, um, with Druid City Games, they've only really got five titles out there um, however, you know, games like Title Blades, um, Sorcerer City, Sorcerer City, they were actually, you know, did quite well on Kickstarter. And then it was, um, you know, not all of them went to retail. So that's kind of why we thought that there was a good candidate for this list. But uh, yeah, Druid City. Wonderland's War is another one. Yeah, Wonderland's War. Druid City, yes, it, yeah, because yeah. you came up, you gave me a few names and you wanted me to confirm if they were small. I mean, I would say these are small. Yeah, they've not done a lot in the grand scheme of things for sure. But yeah, yes, the, the ones they have had have been pretty successful. I think really successful. Yeah, but they haven't had like a ton. And of course, I'm really biased because Tidal Blades is one of my favorite games right now. <laughs> so I'm like, well, if I love it, then everybody obviously knows about it. <laughs> It's a, this one gets loved by a small collection of people. Like a lot of people have not played this, but the ones who have played it will not stop going on about it. It's like it's it's got that niche, big fan base. If that makes sense. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm a part of it. <laughs> it does it does look gorgeous. I would like to try it at some point. I mean, I don't know Wonderland's War. I've heard of the Grim Forest, and I've seen people play Sorcerer City. I don't know if it's something I'd like. Cause this is a, this is real time, isn't it? It's a real time tiling game. Yeah. It's, it's can get pretty crazy, um, but actually it has a nice you know pace to it too. You stop it at various points and can yeah. kind of go again, so that way it's not constant pressure the whole time. And then they have like this cute little um, kids game. Barn yeah, there's a kind of like a, I would call it, Roundup or something? yeah, I would call it like Sheriff of Nottingham yes. yeah. for kids, basically. Yeah. It's teaching our four-year-old to lie. <laughs> you, you're because, smuggling in these. Because <laughs> they you have, that up, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, because you have to, you, you lie about what you have and what you're passing to people. Um, I've got three chickens, that kind of thing, you know. Yeah, and, yeah that, that's uh, definitely a kiddie like artwork and stuff, right down oh, to yeah. the robber being your classic <laughs> TV robber. <laughs> yes. no, no, I, had not, I had not heard of that one, so that's a there we go. Yeah, they. I mean, one thing to bear in mind as as I'm scrolling through these is do not take this number as a gospel ranking thing when we're saying small publishers because. Where there are some like that have only produced like two games and they still say see all 69 or something because when you go in it counts all the promos and yes. expansions and yeah. everything yeah. which is really annoying board game geek sort yourself out but because <laughs> yeah, we went to the that... website and they actually only show five titles yeah but so... online it's 17 yeah, so we kind of had to like do a bit more research to find out but yeah this see all bit was absolutely useless have you played the game <laughs> forest we, we have i haven't played that one no that's the only one that I sort of heard of before, but again, I just knew no one that played it. I just remember looking at all their... I mean, they, they know how to do board game covers. I'll give it that. Yeah, Every single board game cover production. makes me want to play it. Yeah. Their production value is amazing. Actually, really, we'll really go good. for that. I right, say, so, uh, Jen's turned up, so hello to you. Hey, what's up, Jen? Uh, we? <laughs> Jen, with that, everybody's 
coming in now. Odd bird game should be in there, right? Literally only one man operation. Well, <laughs> funny you should mention that, but we'll get to that point a bit later, I think. <laughs> so, my number five myself, and I'm making certain I write down the timestamps because it's a lot easier this way. Right. I struggled between two. One of them's definitely going to be an honorable mention for later, but I. I haven't played all, I mean, a lot of these small publishers have not played all their games. And as much as I have to sort of go, all right, I have to house rule a couple of their games because mechanically it can be a little bit questionable. I'm always, I've, I think one criteria I've gone for the small publisher is how excited am I that they're bringing out another game, you know, as well oh, as their size. Good. So I might not necessarily love every single game they've got, but if it says so-and-so announces game, I'm like, oh, oh yeah, I want to have a, a look at this. And in terms of coming up with a great theme i gotta give awaken realms their uh, shtick because they're not that big they only started a few years back and i think it was only three of them to begin with i don't think their team's particularly large the main reason people might think they're quite big is because the the masses on kickstarter but that's usually just going into making the game that's not like oh this is money in my pocket you know yeah. million pound dividend or anything but mm -hmm. when it comes to uh, like granted F of Fields was a bit of a dud mechanically, but I still thought the theme was fantastic in it. I would love to try Lords of Hellas, uh, but I do enjoy Nemesis. I've got like the whole collection over there, like from Kickstarter, which I want to sort of open up and get going at some stage. Uh, Tainted Grail, I've been seeing the praises of. Yes, I have to house rule one or two things from a mechanic standpoint just to balance out some of the grinding but i've loved the two campaigns i've gone through and i've still got one more to go through in this with the the dark and gritty arthurian legends which i think is a really cool setting and then on top of that uh what was the other one well technically this is it's kind of partially them and partially galatka games but they did technically have a hand in this war of mine as well and i've sung the praises of that one so granted yes dark and gritty seems to be their shtick <laughs> so if that's not your deal then fine but you know when they do and and also i think they've got uh, the great wall coming out which i backed um which looked quite well the sort of uh, chinese wall um the great wall defense game worker placement with some theme and that it's like oh, okay that looks pretty cool as well so I'm in for them. It's a case that, that I, I know they're going to give me a setting that I'm going to get immersed in. Whether the game will work mechanically for me is obviously, you know, the bit that's obviously not as consistent, hence five. But yeah, Nemesis, Alien in Space, Arthur and Gritty Legends, you know, Dark Gritty War setting based on that really cool video game. The only one I have not tried properly is Lords of Hellas, but I want to. And again, that theme looks really cool with this kind of mix of a, uh, you know, almost like cyber technology with like Greek and Greek pantheons and that. It's like it looks, they always look cool on the table and they always have a setting that I'm like, cool, I want to get immersed in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, across the board, I mean, those are some A list quality, you know, titles and the artwork, just like, you know, it's the Druid City is every one of them is eye catching. I haven't one played one. any of those. I've heard of a lot of them, but I haven't been able to play any of them but yeah the theme is really compelling like i want to read a book about all i can't imagine these kind of games are like your thing <laughs> so. yeah this is not the kind of games that we usually spend money on but at the same time whenever i see them at a game night yeah. i usually you know try to hop in on it just to you know learn more about it mm. yeah they're they say they're not for the uh they're not for those with small wallets, and they're certainly not for those for the faint of heart either on some of them. I mean, uh, Nemesis is fine. It's just like Aliens in Space. But, you know, some dark stuff happens in Tainted Grail, and obviously you need to not get easily riled by the war setting in order to get through this war of mine, particularly the Days of the Siege campaign expansion it had, which I think is based on the Siege of Sarajevo or something, which I think is actually a, like, a real war, as far as I'm aware. My history is not great. But again the stuff i remember doing in that as i went through the campaign it's just like jesus <laughs> <laughs> it's like you, you've really got to make some like questionable decisions in that one and uh, ready so yep cool not a bad start so far And we got a few new ones in. So hello to Gary. I don't understand any of this. <laughs> so, fair enough. A lot of people don't understand anything I go on about. So that's all good. Uh, oh, that's my bit... dad, by the way. Gary. <laughs> oh, right. So your entire family. You did... <laughs> 
So I'll get like I'll get like five people pool, watching the stream. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so I'll get ten people watching the stream because it's Monday night and most of them are your family. I mean, fair enough. Yeah. Numbers a bit. <laughs> but we'll go with that. Um, yeah. This show on your board game breakfast segment. So do you not do those anymore? Uh, I took a. I took a seat back, so Ryan's been doing them. Um, I should be coming back in July. There was just too much going on in life, and I said I needed to mm. cut something out. So. That's one of those things that you know, like we said we talk about mental health, and that was one of the things. Just there was just too much too going much. on, and that was yeah. You know, just take the yeah. brakes off a little bit in that one area, and there you go. That's fair enough. I mean, I'm I'm tempted to come back to it. Tom has mentioned like you know if people can do it and i did email him back but i'm waiting for him to sort of confirm if he's got capacity or not because i might be able to try something quick for board game breakfast because i kind of miss doing it for throat punch lunch you know, so mm. it was, yeah it was quite a nice way to do it so i don't know if he gets back and if he gets back in touch and says there's room i might try some uh, like you know good man bad game of a mechanic type thing or something I'm, <laughs> I'm asking i'm asking people to give me suggestions so it should work on that All right but carry on number fours <laughs> All right, so I'll let you take this one. This is um, your pick, not yeah, mine. Yeah, so <laughs> our number four Disagreement. is... There was, there was some heated discussion. Anyway, my our number four is <laughs> Card Lords. Um, and they Ooh. have a really... Card Lords. And it's, that's it's one, one word. It's one word. And they just do card games. But I feel like they do a wide variety in that... Um, one of my favorite ones of theirs is Animalchemist. 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 I can't, I don't know why I struggle with that. But so that one is kind of, I hate um, Splendor, but this is like almost the exact same game, but it just has such a better theme that I like it. And then they had another one. They had Lucky Luau that was, I think, on Kickstarter. Lucky Luau, yep. Yeah. And then um, Battle Goats. There's a couple of versions of Battle, Battle Goats. Battle Goats. But it's literally just. A, a little, a little a, tuck box is all yeah, it is. Yeah, that's all game. it is. But I just feel like they do such a great job with just that. And so um, I like that they have like a really specific thing that they're doing. And I feel like they're doing it really well. Yeah, uh, and they the are. First I have, this is the first I've heard of this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are the definition of a small publisher. Um, yeah, and they just have that, that really small niche of making really small card games. You know, 52 card decks probably or something close to it. And uh, and the, each game we've played of theirs has had a completely different vibe. It's not exactly. like they just do the same yeah. game over and over again. One of it was kind of a, um, I don't know, there was a, there was a push your luck one. There was one that was kind of a, um, a set collection one. There was one that was a uh, resource management thing, one that was um, uh, almost like a, a, a betting kind of a thing. Yeah. So there's each game has its own it's almost like they took the model of the tiny epic games from Gamelin, yeah, and did something similar with that. Each just one of their the games, cards, yeah, you know, they just took a deck of cards and made a new game out of that. Yeah, and I felt like they just they really do a great job with that specific thing. I don't like them as much as Bethany, but I still uh, they're, they're quintessentially a small public. <laughs> uh, this will probably be the smallest one on the list, and I'll, I'll tell you now it's smaller than any of the ones I've picked. So we'll go with that. But I mean you. There's there's agreements, you know. Mike, Michael thinks it's a like a truly indie pick, and certainly they do because I'm looking at the ratings for these games. They've got like nine, ten, eight, Battle Goats 30, 76, 35, and then ranks in the several thousands. I mean, I'd never heard of this publisher before, so I don't even know if they've distributed their stuff like overseas or if it's just in America, maybe depending on where they're based. It's that's possible. Could be because it doesn't actually say. Although I'll give the fact. I mean quote unquote captivating design i've never played their games but the the artwork on these games i was looking at was pretty sweet oh yeah it's nice it's very nice and even the box that they come in like the boxes are really nice box to yeah, hold the cards nice little box. yeah <laughs> so it goes that one well fair enough i had never heard of that one before uh well though nerd shelves you've come along what's that uh i wish i could watch more but i have to adult today work cool story is like <laughs> I finished my work. What is everyone else still working for? <laughs> That's what happens when you got to play to a, like, mostly an American audience or something. The time zones are just bad. Yeah. Right. Well, in, right. Okay. Fine. So, in my case, again, how small are they? Well, based in New Zealand, they're not the largest firm in the world. They started off making literally only limited print runs uh, for 
like just New Zealand and they never got wide wide distribution and barely anything there. And that was how they started. But even though they've only made six games that have kind of gone wide and two of them aren't necessarily regarded as high, you can't deny that Garpil Games have certainly started making a name for themselves now. Yeah, they, and I know Renegade Games distributes a few of their things, but all their particular ones, mostly hosted by Shem Phillips, you know, Paladins, Viscounts, Architects, Raiders of the North Sea, like basically everything from North Sea and West Kingdom trilogies was all Garpil Games. It was them to begin with. And three of their games are like some of my favorite Euros of all time. I mean, I've even got like a few of them like sort of next to me in a sense, Viscount, Psychotex, and Raiders are my three favorites. I'm okay with Paladins. I've kind of like, I'm, I'm not desperate for Paladins, but I mean, Raiders of uh, Scythia is a good one. You know, if you want a slight alternative to Raiders of the North Sea. But now when, <coughs> when they come out on Kickstarter, I'm interested to see what the next Euro is. I mean, even if it's the same one in the trilogy, because I'm kind of like, okay, let's see if we can, how are they going to change things up while still keeping the setting the same? But if they start something new, then even better. Because once they, when I was done with Raiders of the North Sea, when they first announced Architects, they, you know, it, it worked well and it started off and now the rest of the trilogy is pretty solid. I mean, Architects is one of my favorite worker placements. You know, I gave it a 10. It's just buttery smooth streamlined and does yeah. a nice little twist on the the whole worker placement genre. I said I like burned a little bit on Paladins, but you know, it's popular with a ton of people. So you can't <laughs> deny it's definitely had its impact. You know, loads of Euro heavy Euro gamers will call this one of their favorite solo titles. And the newest one, Viscounts, again, loved it. One of my favorites of 2020. I won't say how much a favorite because I don't want to spoil the upcoming list. But <laughs> I've got to go over my 2020 list again as a retrospective. I don't want to quite spoil where Viscounts could maybe not necessarily end up. So, <laughs> But yeah, so they've just got to think about mid-weight Euros. They've kind of conquered that. Oh, region yeah. and i do i like a heavy game as you know much the next gamer and i like some light games but midway is kind of my sweet spot you know i don't want it to be too hard to teach people but i want it to give me a little bit of a like tense like a little bit of interesting mechanics and decision making and i think garfield games just do such a good job of being like right in the middle like All you said earlier things. about like when if you're excited about if a publisher is coming out with a new game that's like them if ever they come out whenever they come out with a new title i'm always excited about it. i don't even know what it has to be about i'm just excited it about was in it hadrian's something hadrian's wall maybe is another one of theirs right um i think yeah i think first. hadrian's well the hadrian's one is the only one i'm a little bit like for about and that's yeah, i haven't I, played it but it's here. a roll and write <laughs> and i'm just it's, like supposedly they say it's heaviest roll and write ever <laughs> <laughs> It, That's what I it looks like saying. it. Yeah. It looks like it. But then if it's that heavy, why is it a roll and write? You know, why is it not a full on board game? It at some point I'll try it maybe, but I just I mean look at that. That just looks ridiculous how much <laughs> stuff is spread, on that shit. Yeah. Spreadsheet the game and I've I've just so, so burnt out on the roll the and write. <laughs> spreadsheet yeah. the game. Spreadsheet the game. I'd love to get one to try. It's at the demo shit off at our local game store. So I'm gonna give it a try one of these one of these nights. Um yeah, we we thought about them too. We didn't know how much the Renegade collaborative Connection, aspect yeah. was going to be a deterrent for some people, so we didn't put it on our list. But it's definitely high, 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 high for us. It's on our short list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was a the hard part because as much as because when looking for it, it's got all oh, yeah, the small publishers and that, and sometimes there are collaborators, but it's hard to tell whether the other publisher is just there for distribution more than anything else. Yeah. And yeah. at the end of the day, I kind of had to think, well, okay, yes, that person's distributing over there. Like, uh, uh, well, actually, I don't want to spoil for another choice later, but it's, you, you know, in this case, Garpil Games are the ones who have come up with this game. It's them who have designed it. It's them who have effectively published it and developed it. It's just the fact that to get out of New Zealand, Renegade Games has helped them get to a different market. But the majority of the work is still done by Garpil. And for some of the choices and some of the things I've made, I've kind of just had to make a very sort of subject decision as to like, okay, I, I'm pretty sure you did most of the work. <laughs> so we'll, we'll give you the credit and just acknowledge that Renegade like lent a helping hand or something. Because it's not like they're a group. It's not like an Asmodee so-and-so owns someone else. Yeah. 
Right. It's just that. I mean, Arcane Wonders is similar in a sense. Arcane Wonders like redistributes a lot of the uh, foreign games to American market. You know, certainly a lot of, I think, a few Asian titles or a few niche titles came over. I mean, Arcane won, um, no, no, the Onitama didn't used to be, no. like, it was just, like, some little dude. I think it might have had a little publisher originally in its, like, early form. And then Arcane Wonders took it and brought it to America. But at the end of the day, it wasn't Arcane Wonders that designed the game. As I say, we're all, like, coming up with all sorts of subjective nonsense. <laughs> this list, so we're kind of just yeah. having to make do with it, really. <laughs> but I know, get right to freeze. All right, so I'll take this one on. Uh, this, we, this is a weird one. Uh, Boardgametables.com. <laughs> That's what the company What's the name of the company? We are, and, aren't we talking about board game publishers specifically? <laughs> we are. Uh, yeah. But so what do you think they make? They make board game tables. Well, tables, I assume. <laughs> and, and, and darn good ones, too. But they do have a few titles that they have published under their own yeah. name. Like by. Bites was one. Right? Bites. Bites, yeah. Uh, it was a really fun uh, little trail-making game. There was QE, which I know made a, a little bit of a splash when it first came out. <laughs> Not my favorite. Splash. Oh, I was going to say. Great. If, that was great. You're not, they did you're not, you not Adlima, too. You're Let's not winning see. me over an hour. Is it all one word? <laughs> yeah, I, be, I believe so. Boardgametables.com. Loot of Lima was another really fun deduction game. Uh, not social deduction, just straight up deduction, Sudoku style. Yeah. Um, deduction, the kind of treasure hunting game that was really interesting. Here we go. <laughs> and then uh, on tour was one of theirs. There was uh, uh, bites. Bites is a really awesome one, though. Yeah, we really like bites. Well, QE QE is the one that yeah I've tried it. Not the biggest fan of, but you know it, it it's done well with a few auction fans who want something a little bit crazy and dare I say broken, but. <laughs> it's, it, it is it, definitely it, wild it's a like i said a mental idea i mean it's interesting because i didn't know who published qe at first so the idea that it's essentially a site that was making board game tables i mean according to this based out of uh lenexa kansas began publishing board games in 2018 so literally three years ago they started actually bringing yeah. some games out before then, obviously, a ton of tables, which I wouldn't have seen because I would have—I you know, don't think they would have brought them over to Europe much unless they were on Kickstarter. But I, I recognize on tour. I've mm -hmm. heard some yeah. good things about that. that I played was, the app. I've never played that one in person. Yeah, I played that the app was of an it. app. Oh, but that, again, I mean, it's technically not roll and write. It's a, <laughs> something else and write in this case. But I mean, I would give it—I'd give it a try because it does look like a interesting little root connection game. Factory Funner looks like a reprint. I'm pretty certain they didn't do it originally because um, I think Factory Funner's quite an old game. And what was the other one you were trying to mention a second ago? Bites. Bites? That yeah. one. Yeah. Bites. Yeah, that's it's this, these these giant ant meeples and just really high high quality components for this what amounts to a pretty simple trail you know little game where you're yeah. following along to get to be a set collection and there's a bunch of different versions of the rules where each time you play it is essentially a different game. Yeah. Um, like how things score and how you collect things. And so every game is a little bit different, like Ryan said, with how you end up scoring at the end. Was it? I like the I like the fact you've got this little, almost like 3D structure of the ant hill, which is yeah. in a tiny little box. I mean, that's, that's pretty ingenious how they've done that. And then what, you've got this little ant going around eating pieces. I mean, this kind of gives me a bit of a patchwork vibe with the uh, you're you're collecting them you're not actually do you're not actually like building anything but you're collecting them and then you score at the end but the scoring is different depending on what card you place and then where the ants finish on that hill that also changes depending on the scoring game that you play so there's different ways to score it and play it right <laughs> yeah it, it, there's ants for each different food so like there's a red ant red ant that lands on the apples, a, blue, a green ant that lands on the peppers, a purple ant that lands on the grapes and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, so you uh, don't own any of them. Every player can choose when to move one. Yeah, Like, it's, it's not, not like I have only the grape. Anybody can do it, yeah. Over that. Mountain goats I've never heard of. Sequoia. Seriously, publishers, name your, name your games things that people can pronounce. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Stop making us feel like idiots. Yeah, there's a lot of vowels there. <laughs> Over that, again, I mean, not bad on the whole production front, uh, at least from an artwork perspective. I can't quite tell what this one's meant to be, though. That one I'm not one familiar one. with. It must be a oh. newer one. I... 
2020, new... so last year, yeah. probably yeah. with only 10 minutes, apparently. Some really, like, <laughs> titchy game about growing the tallest trees. Hmm, okay. I mean, I, li I like this one. Is that, is that literally what it just means? Really big tree. <laughs> really big tree. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, why not, why not call it that? I mean, it doesn't have to be this, like, Ponzi. Like, I don't, I'm sure it's a proper word, but not, you know, pronouncing it will be a pain and people really will have to look tree. up what it means. I think if they just called it really big tree, that would have just been more amusing. Yeah, there's the Sequoia National Forest in California, which is like apparently the biggest trees in the world, which is what they're going for. But right. not everybody can pronounce <laughs> Sequoia. <laughs> and yeah. I know I wouldn't if I hadn't already heard it. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm pretty sure that name doesn't really appear anywhere in the uh, in the UK <laughs> or too many places in Europe either. Okay, fair enough. So number three, right, all right. All right, we're going for, I'm getting it right this time, Taiwanese market, not Japanese, because God knows how many times in the past I've been taken to town on that front. But I have gotten to a point where, and a couple of honorable mentions will highlight this as well. I'm starting to get a little bit burnt out on the fact that everything is this whopping great big campaign game with legacy mode or needs three hours to play, is on Kickstarter for a million pound, here's all your components and that. And it's just like, I would like somebody to just make some nice, small, charming games, you know, a small box, decent amount of rules. And when it comes to, you know, the Taiwanese market in particular, Empress 4 has to take my votes. All these little, like, little nice games that they've made. One of my favorite two players of all time, Hannah Mikoji, uh, Shadows of Kyoto, Temples, Walking in province walking in burano i got quite a few of theirs here and there have been some more that i just haven't kept that i've sort of let go from the collection but emperor s4 just put out some nice charming games you know not complicated rules usually multiplayer or two players and each one feels very very different just trying to get them on the actual screen but i mean have you got any of those in your collection yeah we've played hammer koji yeah. i haven't and Walking in Burano here was published, or at least distributed by AEG. Um, but that was a really fun one, too. Yeah, that was. Yeah, AEG sort of, I think, have distributed them a bit more your end, uh, on sense. I mean, we get a few of them in Europe, but they do appear at Essen and have their own sort of very small booth, uh, like teaching a bunch of the little games. And they have come out with quite a few. You know, so if I was going by number of games, they would certainly not necessarily be small, but they're not particularly huge i mean I, I suppose i can't speak for taiwan specifically but you know they they aren't necessarily like the biggest known publisher around in the world but a lot of them are these really small games i think uh, realm of sand was one of their more recent ones it was kind of like a, a cross between a tall kind of cross between splendor and patchwork okay like laying tiles but you're grabbing the tiles in order to grab cards in this kind of splendor fashion uh jiguan which i quite liked it's pretty a little bit on the fiddly side which i think is what put a few people off but it was definitely quite a finky like pattern laying game herbalism is a nice charming little game not to be confused with herbaceous that's a different story but uh you know nice light one there hansi not one of their best granted there's a, <laughs> they can't always be great but uh yeah, Hannah Mikoji just absolutely love that game. Burano's pretty solid as well. Hannah Mikoji's getting an expansion as well later this year. Cannot wait. <laughs> so basically more action tiles that you can use with it. So you can add a bit of variety. Cannot wait for that. But yeah, it's, it's just, and I suppose walking in Burano, I can't seem to find it on this list here. But yeah, this was a bit of a surprise hit for me. Like one of those hidden gems. I'd have to get it in on here. What? Hidden? No. <laughs> walking. <laughs> Stop repeating what i'm doing yeah walking in burano so this one has you like laying these different houses imagine that these are split into three cards so you've got to uh, need to find better pictures um, here we go so you know you're piecing together the houses of the different colors you get the individuals underneath to score your points for what icons all over them so cats chimneys flowers curtains you know the shop windows and that but again stupidly simple rules but every time i show that game off to people they enjoy it and i probably should be owed royalties by empress 4 by now the amount of times <laughs> i think i've sold copies of hannah mikoji and, and walking in burano at dice teaching events because i teach a couple of like you know people the game and then they go that's sweet if they got it over there and it's like yep <laughs> so, <laughs> it's like go on over there but now nah, lovely little charming small games and 
there's a couple of honorable mentions I'll say later, but in terms of ones that I know I like a lot of the games, it's definitely Empress 4. But you don't sound like you've played a lot of these. Walking in Perun is the only one that I've played, and I do really like it. It's still, um, we we haven't gotten rid of it, I guess. So that's how you know we still <laughs> like it, is that it's still in, <laughs> it's still Glare, in our collection. <laughs> a glaring review is like, I haven't got rid of it, so it must be good. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, get, we cycle through, because we have like this philosophy in our life that we have like a one in, one out thing. So whenever we get something, yeah. we have to get rid of something. And so that one, is not one that we went to, so it stayed with us for a while. There you go. Well, I got and I played Hammer Coach, and I really enjoyed them both. Um, but yeah, I don't know if it's just our local stores or 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 what it is, but yeah, a lot of those Asian market games don't come over here. Like the Oink games, only a handful mm. that we see over here. Um, I just everyone I've played, I've loved, but it's just not something that we, for whatever yeah. reason, here in the Midwest, the U.S., see a lot of. Yeah, except for the, I mean, the, the main hits, you know. Yeah, I mean, Oink, I mean, they would fit the list, definitely, but there's a lot of Oink games I've tried, and I just haven't really attached to a lot of their titles. So they're not for me, but I mean, I could see easily why other people would put them on their list, like their own personal list, because I think they're definitely small, and they're doing that. I mean, I've always wanted to try a lot of the Oink games, because as I said, small, nice little charming card game, or whatever game they do. But I just haven't really latched on to I mean, Fake Artist Goes to New York or whatever is probably the best one I've enjoyed because I kind of like that whole figuring out who doesn't know what. And because I can't draw for Toffee, everybody thinks it's me anyway. <laughs> but I never was. I, I played a couple that I thought were kind of average and I really didn't like Deep Sea Adventure. So I just, I don't know. <gasps> <sighs> <laughs> I, we have so much fun with that game. We die all the time because we That's just, the problem. Start... You always die. <laughs> I have, like, I like stuff like that. So it's it's a problem I have. I'm working through it. It's fine. <laughs> yes. It's just basically, here's the, little t here's the little charmy little game where you go down and drown. That's literally the tagline. Yeah, the it's Three times awesome. <laughs> Can I play it now? <laughs> Uh, how do you say where in the Midwest are you guys? You must be talking about YouTube specifically then. Yeah, we're in Iowa. We're in the Quad Cities, which is kind of where uh, there's right on the border of Illinois. There's Iowa. Um, uh, what am I trying to say? Davenport, Bettendorf, Moline, and Rock Island. So a little Quad City area there. Right. If you notice, Brian mentioned five cities, but it really is called like... The Quad Cities. It's called the Quad Cities. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's the... Math is, is hard here. It used apparently. to be the Tri Cities, <laughs> and then eventually it became the Quad Cities. People are trying to make the Quint Cities a thing, but nobody's it's not doing it. On. Yeah, no. So effectively, you're doing your own five tribes over there, then. Is right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it's five tribes, but there's only four tribes in a game. Now we've added the sixth tribe. Yes. It only goes to five players, though. It's just yeah. like, oh, God, seriously. Yeah. We're just <laughs> living that in real life. Yeah. That's fair enough. Ready? Uh, what was that? That was our freeze on the tools. Um, so this is one where we weren't sure if it was like, if it counted or not, but we're doing it anyway. <laughs> we saw it on someone else's indie game list. So we're like, well, if they put it on, then we're sure we, we can. do can. it. Yeah, we can do it. It's fine. But this is one we've liked almost everything that we played from them. And this is Genius Games. Okay. No, I'd, I'd say they I'd say they're uh, in, indie or small. I'm not even sure what the difference in terminology is, but yeah. <laughs> I am like, where is it? I'm quite obsessed with Genotype right now. Oh <laughs> my gosh, I absolutely loved that game. It was so much fun. I can always tell that I really enjoy a game when I can't win, but I still want to play it again because I'm not like put <laughs> off by that. And that's one of them. The but thing about their games is every one of them has some kind of scientific concept or, or thing that they're teaching right so like for yeah. instance we just recently talked about subatomic we know or periodic it's teaching the periodic table to people uh the subatomic is a small little deck builder but you are literally building an atom with all these quarks and up quarks and down quarks and electrons and neutrons and all those things and you're combining them to make to make atoms yeah. and a smiley uh, face the game i think <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the little emojis there um but yeah, we've played one called Ecosystem that was all about making a healthy, thriving ecosystem, Yeah, which sounds kind of boring, I guess. But when you compare that with uh, a drafting mechanism like a Seven Wonders or Sushi Go style mechanism, it made this charming little game that at the end of the day made you really want to realize, okay, so if all these animals, you know, let's say if we took out even one aspect of these animals from this diversity of the ecosystem, the whole yeah. thing kind of collapses a little bit. 
also with ecosystem it has a very good um dummy player which i don't see a lot in card drafting games um but not only does the game like get taken like a card gets taken out but then you flip it you flip it over and they actually score so when it comes to bonuses at the end they can actually knock you out of getting the bonuses Mm. and as you know we play a lot of two-player games so games that have a good little two-player thing in there like are great for us oh but that's i mean I've, i've not really tried a lot of these but i mean a deck builder would get my interest anyway you know, regardless of what the theme of it is, because most deck builders don't. But these, they've got some... I don't remember Genius Games when I've heard of them having this, like, decent look of production and art. Yeah, this is the past three, four, five years. They've really, ch- you know, these yeah. are kind of like the nerdy science games, and then nobody ever played them. But they've really changed, you know, starting with, I'd say, the periodic era. Yeah. Somewhere in that range is when they've really, you know, upped their quality and upped the gameplay. The gameplay became forefront instead of the education. Yeah, because yeah. I remember stuff and, like this, like periodic, and I'm thinking, okay, it's something that's good for education, not, you know, not something I'm going to play with people and things like that. But and I don't know whether uh, Cytosis was another example of that, where I'm sort of going, actually, no, that's pretty good production as well. But there was definitely, I think, like periodic at a time where I just thought, yeah, yeah, educational games, I'm not into those myself. But I mean, I just looked at your subatomic, and it's like, that looked pretty sweet. Genotype looked nice. Ecosystem looks gorgeous. Yeah. his artwork yeah, looks really absolutely nice. beautiful you know even if i didn't necessarily like the game i'm just gonna stare at the pictures all day yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah they do a really great job and i i have yet to play a game of theirs i didn't like yeah it's it's, it's a really weird mix you know usually you hear the educational game and you're turned off i think yeah. they have switched to having their game game content be at the forefront that also teaches a a concept as opposed to teaching a concept in a game yeah they, you know th- there's a subtle difference that. between the two yeah. right mm-hmm. and they flipped to where i think it's more palatable for gamers now yeah they, it does look like these more recent ones are kind of like oh okay need to give them a look uh curious where they're based genius games doesn't say where they're around here i wonder if the home page mentions anything specific kind of curious well, if it's if it's mentioning things like popular science and scientific American, I'm going to assume it's based down your way. To be perfectly honest, so um, <laughs> it's it's loaded on a, it's loaded on a different tab. But yeah, I mean, it's there's a lot of citations of American science magazines. So I'm going to assume <laughs> they're American based, but I could be wrong. We don't know. That's but, a pretty safe assumption. Yeah, <laughs> big enough place. But nah, fair enough. I'm going to have to give them a more definitive look then if i see them at i wonder if they'll be at the games expo west and i'll have to see but no i'm gonna have to pay a bit more attention to them and see particularly for something like subatomic that you know as a small little deck builder if it's simple i don't care if it's trying to teach i might just enjoy it for the deck building side yeah okay, okay. fair enough all right with my number two i'm going to big <laughs> big games <laughs> they've technically done excluding what's on their kickstarter at the moment they've done technically four games Free mainly. That one of them was a spin-off card game, which was still pretty decent. But so far, they've yet to produce a bad game. But they have only produced about three games, so it's kind of like this is why they didn't go to my number one. It's kind of like it's early days to call you fantastic just because you've made free games I love. But in terms of heavy games, though, they know how to not only generate something that is incredibly thinky, but also, in for the most part, very thematic, or at least they pick a very unique setting. It's not just you know smuggle iron and coal and make money or something you know boring stuff like that they have done effectively the prestige the game they've done you know time traveling debt as a mechanic and they've done effectively the film inside out as a board game and it's mind clash mind clash three massively heavy games not a particularly large company you know they do successful kickstarters but it's only i forget i think it's only a team of seven of them from like the research i did and they're just knocking it out of the park with heavy games. I just love what they do. Uh, yeah, here we go. Yep, Seven Man Army from 2013 and Perseverance. Again, I've backed it. It was pretty much an auto back, although I have played one of the games it's got. But I just love what they do. Okay, the games aren't for everybody. But, you know, Anachrony has your, you know, all those mechs going around, building up the different buildings and the idea that you go back in... You effectively borrow resources from yourself in the future to do something now. It's just like that's like the one-time time travel works in a game, and it's just brilliant. Uh, 
uh, Tricarion, I mentioned the prestige. That's essentially what that is. You know, mm-hmm. try and be, try and be a magician. Your rivals against the others. Very thinky, quite cutthroat because you're blatantly getting in each other's way. But I've got two friends of mine who we play this with the expansion every now and again, and we just have a blast. Yes, we have to relearn half the rules, but that's just the way with a lot of heavy <laughs> games. You can't get by it. But again, I love it and. People don't give this one enough buzz, but I really enjoyed Cerebria. Yes, it's best played 2v2 as opposed to necessarily, but 1v1 works well as well. But having these like gorgeous miniatures on the table in this like kind of dream state with all these emotion cards, a lot of replay value because, you know, you're picking different player powers, but then you, depending on what emotions you bring out or what you evolve them into, it's a bit like Pokemon actually in that respect. You've you got your basic emotions and then you can evolve them into the greater emotions so it does actually feel a bit like pokemon at one point but mechanically all of them just work well they're well designed they got fun solo modes and now the next one is effectively like a a weird sort of jurassic park-esque style heavy euro of you know going after dinosaurs it kind of feels like a sort of not alternate history i mean the alternate future jurassic park style setting so they pick a great setting they get good heavy games. This is what I want in heavy games. Yeah, Tricarion's the only one I'm familiar with. Uh, says an acronym, but uh, Tricarion is a fantastic game. I only played it once with my friend Jen Wee, uh, who chatted earlier. And uh, boy, that was a table hog. Uh, we were playing on a one of those, like, you know, three by six white tables, and it was the whole thing. Um, and what a great game. That was a lot of fun. I guess, like you kind of mentioned, I would have no idea how to play it now because that was, you know, pre-pandemic. But if we busted out again, I would not have a, <laughs> have a clue how to play it because I have to relearn the whole thing. But it was a lot of fun. Yeah, for that, uh, there's uh, like some confusion as to whether their class is small. I mean, again, we're being kind of subjective with the list. But, I mean, three, excluding the current one, three games, because the fourth one was uh, Cerubio the card game. It was a yeah. spin-off they did as part of the thing. And it's a pretty solid card game, but nobody speaks of it. So we're really just talking free titles, and there's only seven of them. I don't class that as particularly huge from a lot of different perspectives, unless these free games have made them several million pounds, you know, in like loads of revenue, maybe. But it, yeah, just because they're big on Kickstarter doesn't necessarily mean that they're large. I mean, you, you know, there's probably a bunch of fanboys out there who will probably go, oh yeah, Cephala Fair games are, you know, a large publisher, and it's like, well, no, they're they're still a small publisher. They've just made one game that everybody raves on about. You know, it's it's not like they've got a massive repertoire of games in that. They just happen to make the one big million maker. And so that's why everybody has heard of them. But I wouldn't consider them large just for that reason. I mean, Kickstarter is a bit of a, I would say, I'm trying to think of the word, a bit misleading if you use that as a criteria because all you got to do is just shove miniatures in your game and you'll make several million pounds. <laughs> But then it, it costs you several million pounds to make the game in the first place. I mean, what do you think? There's just no, there's no unified, there's no definition that across the board people have for small and indie publishers, or we would have used that. Yeah, I think that this, this conversation that we're having is going to spur... Uh, Somebody trying to come yeah, up so, with like, you know, yeah. You know, small, medium, large. Yeah, figure out figure out what it is for us. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I, I think uh, that. Uh, yeah, I board think and that dice. They... I wouldn't say they were small. I wouldn't say they were small by now. I mean, uh, board and dice. They've got quite a fair few games to the name, and they're quite big. I mean, uh, again, how how do you know? It's exactly. like, <laughs> probably medium, maybe. I mean, but what does that mean? What, is, what does what does that does mean? medium mean? <laughs> Don't even yeah. know. Yeah, I mean, it's it's different. One. I mean, I mean, as long as you don't pick somebody who's in the Asmodee group and isn't stupidly large because you know they're stupidly large. I mean, for example, I didn't pick Cosmos games because you can't say they're small. And the yeah. amount of games they've made to date and what they did for like what they do for the European market, it's like no, they're big. <laughs> so you know, it's like goes without saying. But with these other I, ones, I love it's your just criteria hard to tell. though of like what's the size of the booth that they buy. Like that, I think is a perfect criteria. Like whether they can even afford <laughs> people, like just <laughs> to pay people to be at their booth, or if it's the the owner themselves. Like that's that's what we need to go by. I like yeah, it. I like that because because even Mind Clash, if they're there, as far as I'm aware, last time a couple of times I've seen them at Essen or even Games Expo, it might just literally be a couple of tables, 
here's the next game on their list, maybe like one other, and that's it. It's not a particularly huge space you yeah. know, compared with something like, you know, like Portal, I don't consider to be small anymore. They've got quite a big team over there. Their booth's pretty sizable when they go to Essen or Games Expo. I mean, they splash out on their thing and you see a ton of them running around. You know, some of them may be volunteers, but again, they still have a plenty of people around and the amount of games they've done you know i cannot consider and also they've got multiple branches as well because they've got portal us and portal poland so yeah. you know if you've got multi branches all over the world you know you can't necessarily be small in that regard at that point so as i say come up with a list of 100 criteria we're just going to like cherry pick which ones we think out of them yeah <laughs> <laughs> i don't know fricks games i don't see why not i mean what have they done other than terraforming mars to my knowledge, I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> I don't know. And Nank Stronghold does that in the US, right? I don't know. Hmm. So it's a. Yeah. Uh... They distribute it. Well, that's also funny, too, because we're talking about like, well, what about indie boards and cards? Well, they just bought Stronghold <laughs> and Action Phase mm -hmm. Games. It's so Indian they're now. now... <laughs> yeah, so I mean, they've, they're no longer indie, even though it's in their name. Yeah. They're pretty big. They own Stronghold. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I thought, because I thought, like, well, they did Flashpoint, they've done a couple of those I like, but then I thought, but yeah, they bought Stronghold. <laughs> it's like, you don't buy <laughs> yeah. Stronghold without having a sizable amount of capital on, like, on your side, because, you know, Asmodee has been, I don't know, it's a hard one. We shall see. Uh, what we got there? Portals, this is having 29 employees. Well, if they've got That's... twenty, I mean twenty twenty nine is still a fair amount. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I don't oh, think yeah. my I, I don't think my office where I work or something's got more than fifty in it. You know. And that's part of a bigger chain in itself. But the office itself is fifty, and it still feels like there's plenty of people there. This is obviously pre COVID, but it it you know for twenty nine still good. And as I say, some of the ones I mentioned, like Mind Clash a second ago, have seven. You know, three, and there are some that are just one. They've got to be the ones I class as small, but as I say, we'll get onto that momentarily. One. So, our number one is in direct opposition to what you said about your number two, because they've only published two games and an expansion <laughs> to one of their games. Um, but that is Steeped Games, and they've okay. done um, Chai and their expansion high was it high tea and high then tea. um and then their chai tea for two chai tea for two their two player game i probably should have like guessed this one for you i think your camera is like frozen a little bit again there but um yeah i should have probably guessed that steep games would have been well although because i know you love like what they've done and i know it's kind of like they're tailor-made for what you do but i kind of think well apart from chai and chai for two they haven't actually made anything else and that's no. kind of why it's your pick. Yeah, it is my pick. <laughs> there, like, yeah, it is. I think that they are 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 a little bit pigeonholed here in the fact that because of their title, Steeped Games, from here on out, the rest of their games are going to have to be some kind of tea-based or otherwise beverage-based. Like <laughs> Garden bars being like that. Yeah. Yeah. No, you can branch out. It's fine. Oh, they're, I mean, to, to stay on brand, they would have to make only beverage based drinks or games from here on out. And I am here for it. They could do that <laughs> all, all year. I be, I would play all of them and I would enjoy all of them. And it's true. The two they have made, I really, really like. I'm Wonderful totally fine with beverage. They're, <laughs> they're very interactive on their. Um, all their social media too so i feel like yeah. they have their their hand out there they're, they're really good that way that that's certainly then i mean they're pretty even when i did um the pre-kickstarter review for chai tea for two or something you know they were pretty on the ball on instagram and stuff saying you know thanks for that so they do like to give a decent community and i have met them briefly they were at essen last time uh, i wasn't able to speak to them for that long but i mean they just seemed like very friendly a friendly pair and chai yeah. for, chai is fine you know, I don't love it to bits, but, I, you know, it's a very nice, simple tea-based game. So, I, you know, I thought it was pr nice and pleasant. Chai for two, I think I preferred game-wise. But, again, nice production, looks good. And, again, just, you know, in a sense, kind of relaxing. I mean, they are just very nice, charming games. But there yeah. is only two of yeah. them. So, I'm kind but of like... There's only two, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> only two. Yeah, where do they go from here? That's, that's my, my biggest problem. Not problem, but... 
it couldn't uh, be that big a problem because it's Ryan allowed it to be our number one. So yeah, you can't have that I didn't, many I didn't push back a lot, but yeah. I did mention that when we were talking about this is where we do did. they go from here? What you know? Well, some of our honorable mentions much. had like yeah. the opposite issue where we thought they might have published too many games to be considered. Uh, we talk about like Dr. Finn games. He has 69 titles under his, his belt, but a. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Talking, I guess that's with the like screen froze. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so but, yeah, a few of those. Uh, but like Dr. Finn's like a one man show, more or less. But he's got 69 games, including Biblios. So, you know, is that too big? But or is it not? You know, it's, it's hard to tell. I'm so upset yeah. that we chose this. It doesn't, we don't know what it means. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> well, if we made there. an ex excellent discussion, if nothing else, yeah, that's true. Nah, they say they, they are small, they're certainly small now. And I guess it's one of those things that you love the first two things they've put out, and you're keen to see what comes next. Nothing wrong with that, yeah. I mean, some people have mentioned a couple where there's only two or three games out, and we'll get onto those, I think. Uh, with honorable mentions later. In fact, if people are suggesting, because I'm noticing a few in the comments of, uh, you know, what about, what about this company? What about this company? We'll get onto that once I've finished with my one and we've done our honorable mentions because we'll get the chat to basically suggest a bunch of publishers and so we'll sort of say why we didn't choose them or whether we think they're big or small, which will probably be a massive <laughs> minefield discussion in itself. All right. Number one, as far as I can tell, he's small. I mean, it's just him. If it's just him, it's got to be fairly small. Yes, okay, when he appears on Kickstarter, he makes a complete, you know, he gets everybody into it. But it's just him and occasionally his wife. And even then, his wife is mainly there for the musical accompaniment. But I got to give Red Raven, Ron Lockett, his props. I don't consider him to be a large publisher because it is just him. He self-publishes everything. It's all just him who does the design, the publishing, the artwork. Already, that's impressive enough just from the sake of sheer talent. But, you know, some of his games are on my shelf. I rave enough about Empires of the Void 2 being my favorite space game. The only game from him that I don't like, like, objectively don't like, is 8-Minute Empire. And that barely even counts as a Red Raven game. Because after... I mean, Empires of the Void 1st Edition I played a lot as well. But at that time i think eight minute empire just felt like because i mean the reprint was legends but i think the original like didn't even look like a red raven game i think this is like a reprint yeah re-implements eight minute empire with the new artwork so it was kind of like one of his first games and it was just a cube pusher and i didn't like it at all but and as soon as he started doing his artwork trend with all his games i've just wanted to try them all i mean i tried Owlbound recently thought it was a decent little game above and below was was good at first and then i played near and far which are friends of mine have played through like we've played through the campaign several times in the character one we would happily play this on arcade mode uh the sleeping gods have played through the campaign of that and really enjoyed it i've already uh actually i haven't pre-ordered it yet i need to do that the um the new one was it called uh now or never yeah the upcoming one where are you um this is the problem he's got all the uh the different what do you call it? Promo, so that's not going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> Which always works, but uh, what else I got? Oh, yeah. Ancient World 2nd Edition. I didn't play the first one, but I thought the 2nd Edition was really good. It All all the stuff that's got his new artwork on, I'm just going to. And I say, whenever he says, right, Red Raven's putting out a new game and it's got that artwork, the first thing I want to do is check it out. Will it be the best game ever? I don't know, but I think consistently it's something I enjoy. And it doesn't have to be like in my top games of all time i mean people could argue well where's greater than games on my list but yeah greater than games if you look at the whole catalog it's like not played not played not a big fan not a big fan not played two of my favorite games of all time it's like i can't really call them my favorite <laughs> publisher just because of like two games that i adore it yeah but this one just consistently i don't own them all there's only so much space on my shelf so i've kept my favorites but yeah you know what's the next one yeah i got haven up here i still haven't got this one played <laughs> it's been on my shelf of shame for a while because it's a two-player only game i know that's easy for you two but for me it's a tad more difficult so <laughs> but that i i say i adore this guy he does some good stuff and i always look forward to the next title yeah i've never seen ryan you know it's first of all his artwork is so signature too you just look at a game oh is that ryan lockett and mm -hmm. uh, it's just so signature and at the same time so, so good so captivating didn't he 
didn't he recently have a thing on Kickstarter about like a video or something like watching him like the his creation process? Uh, he had something like that. So I think he might have. It was also maybe an extra along with Sleeping Gods, maybe like that Kickstarter. Okay. But I mean, the most recent thing he's done is a trailer for Now or Never, where he's okay. done a bit of the narration. He's shown off some of the art, and he has his wife Mallory, I think her name is, uh, you know, playing flute or piano i mean as far as i'm aware they play several other instruments i mean i swear these people are machines they're not actually human <laughs> the amount of stuff they do but you know i play like Envir's hero sorry it's just like i've never seen a more gorgeous looking space map in any game so uh, i just awesome. rule half the stuff that is there from an artwork perspective or well, you know i like the like character designs i like the imagination that goes behind it i mean there's not a huge amount of like <sighs> It's not like quite Twilight Imperium levels of difference between the factions, but it's just cool that, you know, there's your humans. There's your, He's got a thing about frogs, I think. Frogs and lizards seem to feature quite a lot in this universe. And then you've got these like little parasites and, you know, all these different races. But then you go on to like near and far and it's the same, the same deal with that with all the different characters you've got. And I can't wait for now or never. I mean, I hope it's not necessarily has to be a campaign game per se, but I... You know, I don't know a huge amount of information about it, but, you know, bring on another game in that universe. I'm sure my mates want me to play it as quick as possible, but even if it's even if it's not good mechanically, I'm just going to stare at all this artwork and just, like, like love it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, here we go. Yeah, spiky, spiky lizard dude. He's got a thing about them. <laughs> yeah, we it? don't need any more campaigns in our life. That's the problem. Yeah. <laughs> We've got so many backlogged campaigns that we've started and not finished and uh some from before covid and some we have attempted during it and mm. oh my goodness but if we had another one it would it would probably be uh probably be near and far that's least, your one I yeah so. <laughs> but i mean although i mean you can play them in arcade mode although granted near and far is a lot better not in arcade mode you want that storybook with the quests really ideally but you know i i've kept it even though it's like well how often am i going to play through a campaign of it well you can play through the 12 main campaign or you can play the little character ones which i think are only three or four games they're not as bad but again me and a particular group of friends have like really enjoyed near and far so i know that at some point you know after a while we might go oh, would you just fancy playing through the character one quick a quick refresher of the rules and we just play through it because i don't know whether they'll be able to take to it depends how heavy now or never is. <laughs> That's my yeah. only concern. <laughs> but yeah, that is he's just a one man band talent machine. And you know, even even if it wasn't just for his games, I think I'd have to push him up the list just for sh that. <laughs> because yeah. I just can't imagine the amount of work and stress that goes into that. Right. So honorable mention, was there any that well, I'll get started with one quick. Uh because some people have mentioned Elf Creek. Did they feature potentially on yours? I don't know if I'm yep. familiar with Elf Creek. But if they... Honey... Um, Atlant Atlantis Rising, Honey Buzz, the new Merchants of the Dark Road. I've heard really? of Honey Buzz, but that's the only one I've heard of. You've, well, as I say, you, you recognize Honey Buzz, surely. Yeah, I've seen the yeah, cover. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard of that one. But you, you don't recognize Atlantis Rising, the, the second edition reprint they did? I don't know. That somehow missed our radar. <laughs> wow. <laughs> kind of surprised by that, because, I mean, people were sort of calling in the chat, like, what about them? And they're definitely small. I mean, they, you know, they're in Illinois. There's only a few of them in there, as far as I'm aware. But the main reason I didn't, I did consider them. They are an honorable mention, so they would have been a top 10 easily. But the fact is, is that I like Honey Buzz, and I think Atlantis Rising is really good, and I own that one. I've not played End of the Trail, and I've yet to play Merchants. That's their catalog. So a bit like with the Steep yeah. Games thing, I just felt like, right, you know, I'll give you an honorable mention because you're on, like, like Steep Games is on the right path with you, Elf Creek's on the right path with me. Yeah, yeah, you're creating some very decent games, but you are managing to do games where, yes, you've put them on Kickstarter, but this is like one of the first few publishers where I don't feel I have to buy their Kickstarter versions to get a glorious looking version of it. You know, you can get some blinged out bits but like honey buzz for example i mean i actually couldn't have cared less if i had the kickstarter version of that one because i know what additions you got in it but you still get the gorgeous artwork you still get the the cool meeple tiles and it still looks beautiful so their production quality is off the chain 
for basic retail copies of the game. And it's, as I say, couldn't necessarily put them into top five, but yeah, they're on the right path. Carry on this road <laughs> and you could potentially become a favorite because I did, based on those first two games, late pledge this one. I think I sort of late pre-ordered it. And this one should be fulfilling very soon, actually. I would imagine in the next couple of months, few months, depending on shipping problems, I guess, <laughs> with that whole crisis. Yeah. But again, you know, this one looks gorgeous as you like. And the idea that, you know, if you told me it was called Merchants of the whatever, I would have already zoned out from the title of the game. But the idea that this one is more... It, yes, you've got the trading aspect, but it's more about what you encounter on the dark road itself. You know, like you're probably having to survive the, like, horrors of the night or something while trying to get from point a to point b and it's just like okay that just sounds different <laughs> yeah it looks pretty great makes uh it piques my interest anyways yeah hmm. it's like every little cover so i mean if they come out with another one i'll definitely be looking at it it's just maybe just slightly early days to start calling you like <laughs> to, like great yet it's like you're definitely starting off great though what about other any honorable mentions on your side any others like Forbidden Games, we like those them a lot, um, but they've only got a you know handful as well, and we hadn't played all you know, all of them yet. We've only played Lizard Wizards, which we really liked a lot, yes. And then Railroad uh, Tycoon, or no Railroad right. Rivals, yeah. I really yeah. like that one as well. Uh, they, I mean, they definitely would class as a small publisher. I just haven't liked anything they've put out so far. <laughs> it's the only thing that uh, their games are not for me. They just, they have a, because they, they're going with these whole, like, very lightweight economic games. And it's like, I'm yeah. very rarely going to get into an economic game when it's me. <laughs> yeah, I love Lizard Wizard. And um, I love the artwork in it, like, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's that. the best thing. That's the best thing about them from my perspective. The art does look good. Can't knock that. <laughs> Yeah, I would love to see this artwork on a lot of other stuff. But it's just when I see this artwork being used as a themeless bit for trading iron and coal and stuff, it's like, come on. <laughs> it's like you're wasting this talented artist. It's a bit like brass. Yeah, you're wasting that gorgeous art on brass. It's like, come on. <laughs> Put it somewhere else. But I don't know. As I say, I can easily see why this would be on this. I wouldn't have put it on I wouldn't have thought you would have had it on yours. I wouldn't have thought this was like your style of game, but Apparently yeah, so. Yeah, it's kind of yeah. a, the mid to lightweight euro, and this one had you know some a little bit of push your luck. It had some re the resource management and the resource gathering was really fun. Yeah, it was thoroughly enjoyable for me. But it's the only one of their games that I've played, so we couldn't justify mm. putting it anywhere. Ryan's played more, but I've only played the one. Yeah, most people would have sort of fought forbidden because of mosaic, but I don't know. I was tempted to back it, and I almost did, but I just I watched it, like a couple of like dice tower bits on it and sort of looked it up and it's just like i don't know something just irked me as to whether i was going to enjoy or not and it wasn't the the cheapest thing in the world but i didn't know what kind of game i was going to get with this and also looks wise i don't know i didn't think it was that much of a looker it's not <laughs> <laughs> like, mm. the cards look great but that map just gives me too much of a concordia vibe yeah <laughs> And that, and some people actually said, "Let's like, oh, this kind of reminds me of Concordia or something." It's like that's the last thing you want to say to me if you want to get me to <laughs> get hyped up about your game. Oh, this reminds me of Concordia. It's like, seriously, are you just trying to chase me away? That's not how this works. <laughs> um, I mentioned it before about publishers. Now, granted, I've played what, like, I think I've only played one of their games. Uh, so again, I couldn't even remotely consider them for the list but you know what i said about small games i want to try button shy's catalog i think they're local to me more than anything else uh well no well south jersey okay maybe not but <laughs> i thought they were a bit more local but clearly not but these are the people who as i say i miss micro games micro games where you just basically had 20 or less cards nice little small game and you could just get a nice experience out of it. I, I haven't tried Tussy Mussy, but I hear that's pretty good. Sprawlopolis is the one that they're best known for, which I've got to admit, is pretty solid. Not not necessarily multiplayer, but play it as a solo game. There's very few solo games that will pack this kind of punch in an 18-card wallet deck, which is essentially what they come in. But they've done a big, sizable catalog, and even 
I don't know if these games are good or not. You know, they've made a lot of them. I think they make like one a month. It's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> so, you know, these aren't promos. A lot of these are just actual, yeah, they got some like extra packs, but I mean, Ahead in the Clouds, Amphion, Atomy, Arcane, Bakery, Clash, uh, Agropolis, Adder, 99, Freelance, okay, and that's just like a bear amount. Like I say, Tussie, Mussy, and Sprawlopolis are their ones, Food Chain Islands. There's, they have done so many of these, and I don't know if I would like them or not, but I want to try them. I just don't know how easy it will be or cheap it will be for me to get a bunch of these, not to mention play them all. I suppose that's the thing. It's like I've got enough games on my table I've got to get played for like review purposes. If I got sent 20 of these micro games, how on earth would I manage to play them all? <laughs> and that's my problem with them is, is I think that as much as I would enjoy probably the majority of them, what it would come down to is like we talk about our one in, one out thing. Granted, storage for them is not really a big problem. But, I was going to say, you can't go one in, one out for these. I mean, it's like, <laughs> squeeze but, it every... I could get them in there. That tiny yeah. there squeeze them in. <laughs> but the, the, it comes down to what I really play on a regular basis. Yeah. And probably not, you know, for the majority of them. And it's one of those things we'd bust it out once a year or less. And, and it'd probably all blend together. And I know that's... that's <laughs> A weak excuse, but that's why I've never gotten into button shy games. Yeah, it might be. I mean, I honestly don't know. That's why I didn't sort of consider them as a list. But I, I, I'm glad that there's a publisher out there that is actually trying to do small games for a change, because it would be nice. And speaking of one of our honorable mentions was the um. Oh, oh perplexed. Perplexed. Yeah, they do the the Paco games. I did. Uh, I did. I say I, I know of them and I have played probably more of them than than the other ones, but I don't know. I didn't get into as many of those as the others. I, I get the concept, but maybe at least with the button shy ones, I'm trying to find them. But well, anyway, I'm wrapping on. You carry on. Why 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 perplexed? Yeah, well, first of all, when we're talking about small game publishers, it doesn't get much smaller than than Paco games. Yeah, like <laughs> literal this in is the literal as, sense. This is as tidy as the <laughs> game is. Yeah. Um, and a huge thing for us, at least at the stage of life that we're in right now, is whenever we can play a game with our kids and still play competitively amongst all of us, that's always a good thing for us. And the games that we've played of theirs so far, we've been able to do that. And so that's really. Um, that's you know a huge shining point for us when we can play competitively and our child can play competitively against us um we really like that so we've played dig and fly and what else have you, you played i played bus and i've played box yeah i think i think i played bus i thought that was okay i played a uh, gym which i thought was fairly meh i think they've done one called i think it's just straight up called lie like L-I-E. They're all like, I think they're yeah. all three. three letters. Yeah, three letters. Yeah. But I think, yeah, Lie, which was decent, but I mean, Lie is essentially the, the miniature version of Liar's Dice. So it kind of already had a pretty solid back foundation to build on there. But yeah, I mean, I, I like the idea of them. I think maybe they just go one step too far in that small category. Like, I mean, Button Shy Games are like, right, little wallet, 20 cards, it's a micro card game, fine. This one, a bit like how the Tiny Epic try to do too big a game in a tiny box or something. This is kind of like, okay, seriously, how tiny do we need to go here? <laughs> so, especially when, because it's a pack o gum games, all the like cards are like <laughs> the weird sort of really thin, really long style things. I don't know. It's, it's, it's kind of weird, but I mean, the concept is cool. I just don't know how many of these games are, you know, they, they don't get particularly high rankings, but then that's not surprising for these lots of different small games. They don't tend to get quite as much buzz, but yeah, it's, I think they've done a decent job of having them be um, different enough from each other, though. Like, they're able to do creative things with with yeah. that. They might have explored it all. You might That's, like, the most creativity you might be able to get out of mm. it. But I feel like they've they've done that. What was, what was the other one there? Could we again we mention it? Where is it gone? Add it there. Orc. Anything special about that one? Orc was good. That one looks like a you know, little fighty jewelry game. I'm getting a kind of, huh. I'm getting a kind of. Oh, what's that Rainer Knizia game called? Battle Line. It's kind of giving me that kind of vibe. But 
Yeah, to say. As I say, I mean, even if I don't necessarily like the games, I, I get what you said, actually. You said it yourself. The creativity behind it is just something that deserves a bit of respect. The fact that they're, yeah. they're going with it and they've milked they they've made a thing of it and as i say it's still popular with a lot of people i just noticed that i didn't realize because i think uh uh chris actually got in touch with me because he wanted me to do something on long shot the dice game but uh shipping from the u.s kind of you know got in the way of that but i'll be, I'll be interested to try this one when it comes out because i haven't tried long shot the big version but i didn't i forgot that this was a perplex well when i saw that this one's there and i saw perplexed i didn't remember that perplexed also did the paco gum games so yeah. I didn't realize they were linked. It's kind of curious that they've done the Paco Gum things and then just on its own is this much bigger racing game <laughs> along with the Roll and Write coming. So, yeah, those are good ones. Uh, yeah, Roll and Write was kind of a pass for us. We didn't... <laughs> yeah, the, they have a game called Roll and Write, and it was it's okay. It was okay, at best. It was one of those. I did... What other ones did I cross off? I mean, I crossed off things like Bombix and Libelude and all that, though, because they're all owned by Asmodee, so they're too big. Uh, somebody mentioned TMG, whether they class as small. I don't know if Tasty Mitchell would class as small, but... I don't it, I mean, think I'll... they weren't on our list at all. I don't think no, they thought about I would them. call them bigger, yeah. at least at least on the bigger end of medium. Yeah. I mean, not it, small. I mean, if we're going to... I mean, if we're going to sort of go with the whole, right, what's the difference between small and large? This is actually one of those times where I think medium size actually is a relevant category. And yeah, I think TMG have put out enough stuff you know, see all 143, and I know that's including, you know, various expansions and stuff, but they put out quite a chunk, and they're well known. But even then, a lot of these I've not played, and some of these aren't even their games. I mean, I know Aquasphere was not originally TMG. You know, that I think was a, I think that was Z-Man on Pegasus different. Spiel. So there's quite a few on there, and I've got some games of them on my shelf that I do really like, but no, nah, I wouldn't say I like enough of them to to go with that and somebody and no one's mentioned i'm curious actually how big do you think lucky duck games are we, we so that was too. on our that was on our list our our original list when we were coming up with stuff but we didn't i don't think we had enough games that we had, we had both played to yeah, be able to, to justify it because hmm, we're with this one because I mean, they've got like top games like Too Many Bones, Imperial, and Isle of Cats. Those are not Lucky Duck games. <laughs> they are other right. publishers. I'm not even convinced it's a Wonderful World was Lucky Duck. I think that was a French uh, publisher who put that out first. Yeah, I don't think Watergate so, is either. And no, Watergate is not. So when I sort of looked through, okay, what exactly has Lucky Duck done themselves? And I thought, okay, because I thought like, are they small? Maybe I, I considered them. So I thought, all right, well, let's have a look at through their games that they've done and this is like what their main thing says so I, I don't know if that's their game but i'm not a fan of it's a wonderful world uh never played ganymede uh never heard of mutants I don't know if anyone else is never played vikings gone wild as far as i'm aware nobody really talks about jetpack joyride so i'm guessing nothing much that's not their game that was thunder griff i think thunder griff did that one that's something completely separate. So, wasn't a fan of Paranormal Detectives. I like Court of Miracles. That's on my shelf. Really nice little area control game. Not heard of that one. Meh. It was okay. Although, trust me, it's not impossible for me to sell the Kickstarter pledge for this. It's like, I think nobody wants this game, it seems. It's kind of insane. Can't even get rid of a Kickstarter pledge. And <laughs> King of 12, fine. Nothing special, but it's a decent little game. Chronicles of Crime, excellent. You know, that's like their big hit for me. And I was six out of ten. You know, I thought Destinies was a bit overrated, even though it's a cool bit of innovation. In that. So it's like not like there's a ton of stuff on Lucky Duck for me to go mad for them, except that I do say, right, because every time I think Lucky Duck, I say Chronicles. <laughs> I go get Chronicles. Right. But I, I wouldn't necessarily go for the rest of their catalog. We put down Academy Games um as on our short list that was an interesting choice too like freedom the underground railroad was a was a was a big one for us and 878 vikings there was the 1765 rebellion kind of all kind of all history based games and i thought that that was uh I, they're not it's not educational anyway but they all still kind of have that that historical impact mm. I'd, I'd say they were small. I mean, Kabuki Kuk Kabuki kind of uh, agrees with you. And, and yeah, I know that 
he says like over 80 on this review but there's a you know, I've already reviewed Destinies. You can check out that video. And I, I do think the gang at Lucky Duck are good. It's just their games haven't gelled with me personally. So it's, you know, yeah. different audience, different strokes. But not the same company as Academy Games Limited. So that's a, all right, that's something completely different then. Uh, but <laughs> now I've, I've not played a bunch of these mainly because I don't tend to go for the realistic history stuff. But that's just because that's not my realm of interest but i hear good things about 878 vikings uh dice tower a lot really talked highly about 1775 i've actually played and think freedom is a very good game that is you know maybe it's not the best asset in, yeah it's a heavy in the way that no other game is emotionally you know that's a that's a heavy hitter it every okay, decision it, has a human impact you know it's 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 wild i think well, I mean, aesthetically, it could use a boost. But no, I mean, I thought it was just a decent, like, tense co-op of, like, all right, this almost... I kind of felt this was, like, advanced pandemic. Like, I'm pushing cubes along the map, and I'm trying to get as many cubes to the other side with card play. And I thought it was interesting enough. The The theme of it didn't really bother me that much, but then I tend to detach myself quite a bit because games, for me, are an escape from reality. So that's why I tend to go for something that isn't just simply historical, but it's also why I can play something like this war of mine and not like lose any sleep, you know, yeah. when my orf when the orphanage gets blown up or whatever, you know, it's you know stuff like that. It's like is in the game. It's like ah, that's horrendous, but then it's out of my mind and I've gone to bed. You know, it's, it doesn't affect me afterwards. But then that's that's just what I get out of games. But now freedom was great. Uh, but the reason Academy Games are kind of on my list is because of the stellaris kickstarter that's the one where i thought okay not the first people are the fought off to do a space game but i've played the pc game really enjoy it it is academy games that's working with paradox to do this and i'm thinking well given the amount of effort they put into you know fema mechanics with a lot of their stuff like particularly the detailed games I think if anybody is going to do a good job with this, because it is a very heavy brain burny space uh, 4X game on, on the PC, Academy Games are the ones to do it. So don't mess it up. <laughs> <laughs> I but no, you you don't get to choose to blow up the orphanage. That just happened to <laughs> that just happened to happen to the orphanage in the game. Not my fault. <laughs> I just picked a bad site for them to resettle. <laughs> Can't help it. <laughs> How was I supposed to know? <laughs> Doesn't undo all the good stuff I did for them in the rest of the campaign. So, yeah, so as I say, that's a good one there. I can't think of any other honorable mentions. We've got a couple of minutes left. Uh, anybody else in the chat got one or two that we meant that we haven't mentioned that you want us to go over? I'm having a look, really. Please be one I know. Please be one I know. <laughs> <laughs> was there another one that you can think of yourself uh remember they cosmodrome what about cosmo well uh, i mean who are they are they separate smartphone inc and aquatica and that um okay what was that I'm trying to remember the problem is a lot of them because i had to oh yeah stonemire <laughs> i would so, call would you... them i don't think i would call them They've got some pretty A-list games, and they've got a lot of them over the years they've accumulated. I mean, well, A-list game. I mean, like I say, Cephal Affair technically has an A-list game, and I do. Mean, you're talking about, quote, and, you know, and I do mean that in quotes. But the you know they they have an A-list game, but that's their only decent game they've got. I mean, if you've played the big Euro one they did, Founders of Gloomhaven, that was trash. But the <laughs> other, nobody really plays that game. I know two mates who like it, but they like a lot of beige Euro. So, but they know, but they. Are those Stonemaier, they have produced quite a lot of games, and I don't those know. Those are how... awesome. I mean, if you put Scythe and your Wingspan and Viticulture, uh, Tapestry's not great, in my opinion. And Charterstone didn't, nah. didn't uh, do all that well, but and Beno Pendulum has, was was uh, divisive. Red Rising is really good. Um, between Two Cities, Between Two Castles of Magic and Ludwig, and there's a lot of good games there, and they're they sold quite a few copies, too. They got a pretty well, good with, market penetration, I guess I'll say. Yeah, I mean, 
Stone again, as Kabuki says, you know, if they if you go by employee count, they're small. If you go by sales, they're not. I mean, I wouldn't say Stone Stone Mar, I think, is getting into that kind of medium territory. I think, yeah, this is a, I wouldn't call them large, but I just no. don't know if they're small at this point because they have done quite a fair few big games in their time. But the even if I did consider them small, they've just been too much of an up and down roller coaster for me or something. I mean, yes, I have got. Viticulture, Wingspan, and Scythe on my shelf, and they are some sort of like top fifty games for me. You know, they are absolutely fantastic. But then Charterstone was very meh. Didn't really enjoy that one, especially as a solo player at all. Tapestry is still fundamentally broken. <laughs> it's like absolute broken mess. Uh, yeah. Euphoria, half decent, but again, balance issues. Didn't really get into between two cities. Pendulum was rubbish. Sorry, it just was uh red rising i disagree i really enjoyed pendulum <laughs> just so everybody out there knows then you need to get in touch with gems and biscuits over at my neck of the woods or something <laughs> he's one of the, he's one of the other few people i know who okay. give right pendulum, i liked like, it more than ryan did <laughs> yeah it's but, because uh, there's two ways to play and people just got so like obsessed with the real time that they didn't even explore the other one okay i'm off we can move but on. The other one, <laughs> but the other one's worse. The, you've got the real time, which is the whole stick of the game, or you've got the one where you flip it in a turn sequence or something. I mean, I, I get that for yeah. teaching the game, but if you remove that, you've just removed the only unique selling point of the game. <laughs> you've got to have it real time. I prefer it real time, but I just like <laughs> to let people know there's that other option. <laughs> I like a little bit of chaos in my life, though. So it's just, it's it's too it. stressful. I don't want my... Yeah. I, my work placement to be and that's what I, wanted I to. like that he'll make mistakes so i can win it's wonderful <laughs> but i mean red rising was a uh, red rising again I've, i need to maybe give it more chance but i played a four i've played it four and five players and like how long does this game need to go with four or five players it just won't won't end but I know nothing about the book series, so that never got me in. But what puts me off Red Rising is the idea that every time I teach it to new players, they've got to spend forever reading that tiny text all over the cards for the different abilities. So the game just drags to a halt because as soon as anybody thinks like, oh, this could take a card from yay stack and put it underneath there or something, it's just like, oh, what's that do? And that does that, that does that. And it's like, hi, get a move on. It's like, seriously. <laughs> it's yeah, you know, a bit of iconography couldn't have heard, like couldn't have hurt with that one. I, don't, I need to try it maybe with three players cap. Maybe it's best as a two player game. I don't know, but yeah, playing it with four no, or five. No, it's not. Was just two players not not good. Two well, player was it's... not its sweet spot because you didn't okay. you didn't see enough. So like all those combinations that you're hoping to get, you just don't see enough cards. You're digging and, and digging and player. digging and you just yeah. and they never pop up. God, well, three players the only sweet spot there because I won't play it with four or five. Or again. <laughs> like, like, but yeah, that one didn't go. And I know that there are some defenders of a uh, like tapestry, but I'm sorry <laughs> when your get when your game needs an errata balance rewrite two weeks after you release the game. <laughs> that's a broken game. <laughs> so, and even then, those ba that balance rewrite did not fix a lot of the balance issues. Some of those factions are still fundamentally busted, <laughs> like bad or worse. And that I didn't like, I mean, okay, I knew it wasn't a Civ game going in. It's just level up four tracks. But where's Tapestry on this? I don't have to get back to that one. But the what drove me nuts with it was that the game is called Tapestry. So you'd think that the Tapestry cards that are in it would actually be the fundamental like big point of the game it's not it's literally free cards that you play for the whole game and those cards again are woefully imbalanced <laughs> it's, like, it's just like come on you, know, you you can have a card that gets you like one point if you're lucky and it can be another one that gets you like a course of 10 you know instantly for doing diddly squat it's just, ah, i could not get on with this and it made me sad because i like these buildings the bits is the best part of that game i mean I was thoroughly disappointed with it. I did. I actually did not have a good time. It wasn't like I was just okay with it. No, I actually had a bad time. It was unfun. Unfun. <laughs> yeah. Unfun games. <laughs> and oh, I know we played with five, and I think that five is probably too much, but um, I might have played into it. But even still, I'll never go back. We've we've got like so many fans of 
tapestry in here. It's unbelievable. <laughs> it's like, I know, mean, we love like that. we love tapestry. <laughs> we love it. I'm not gonna lie like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say I'm not saying I like it with a straight face. No, this one. I mean, I I think I rated it five. I don't think I'd. I mean, because the bits of it I. But then I think it gets those five marks mainly because it's not a difficult game to play and it looks gorgeous. But come on, these buildings are just there for a little mini game of Tetris. <laughs> Give me a city builder with those buildings in and then we're talking. You know, that's what I want. <laughs> I don't know. But no, I'm, I'm sticking to my guns. I'm not a fan of Tapestry. <laughs> not happening with there. Uh, was there... Uh, interesting was that, would I like the new Biblios Roll and Write? To be honest, no idea because I love Biblios. I've not tried the roll and write, but I probably wouldn't yeah, mind trying it. Roll and parchment is the is Do the we new one. That? We we've got it. We haven't. It's still in the shrink. We haven't cracked it open yet. Because yeah, your your list that you gave me, you also mentioned Doctor Finn games, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. We, 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 we him because his, he had a lot, a lot, yeah, a lot of titles. Is huge. A big catalog, but none of them are. I mean, in terms of resources, you know, he's pretty much a one-man show too. Um, but he's got a lot of titles, and none of them, are, besides Biblios itself, none of them are really talked about by us or anybody else. They're all fine. They're all fine games. None of them some are of like them are, I think some great are games. Yeah, I enjoy. It's a lot hard of to put them on a list when it's just full of good and not great. Hmm. But that, God, that, we're still, still on the tapestry hate. <laughs> the tapestry <laughs> love. I don't know. But yeah, Dr. Finn, I, I I don't know. I've not played enough of these games. I mean, Biblios are like, I've not played the dice version. I've still not played Herbaceous. Yeah, I've, I have I um, want to try it just because it's just nice and charming. And I'll just look at Beth Sobel's artwork. Uh, Sunset Over Water, uh, you know, fits a small spot. I don't know. Well, I mean, I'll hang on to it because it is just a very nice little charming game. But... Uh, I don't think I've just played enough of Dr. Finn's game. And even then, I'm not sure Dr. Finn did this one because I think this one is... I, I think some of them are actually pencil first. I couldn't quite uh. tell who... St I couldn't quite tell who was first, whether it was Finn or pencil. But I get the feeling it was pencil first. But even then, I mean, I don't reckon... I, I, I've not played the Whatnot Cabinet. I haven't heard great things about it. Not played Legendary Creatures. Still not played Herbaceous, you know, so... I don't know enough about them to sort of give it in. But, I mean, so far, they've just made some very nice, like, charming games, so I can't knock them for that. But, yeah, there's a lot of these indie publishers that I might have not heard of and that because, because, we'll put it this way. First thing you want to do, all right, let's go to, I want to do a list about board game publishers. Let's go to Board Game Geek because, unfortunately, there's nothing better to use. But, you know, let's browse publishers. 114 yep. pages of publishers. Yep. <laughs> Of which that includes things like self-published and public domain is actually a heading. But yeah, so that first page hasn't even started the, the, the letter A. Yeah. yeah, we haven't started the letter A. And have you heard of any of these publishers? And half of them are defunct. It's, it's, it's 21st a... century yeah. games out there. Does that, does that yeah. I mean, there, Free 20th month... century games. I heard of one. 21st century games, 20 grit games, free eight. I mean, free monkeys and 50 minutes games. I mean, what kind of what? <laughs> that's a weird that's a title? Oh my gosh, yes. But I remember going it, through it, these it, when the first pandemic hit and I was really bored. <laughs> I went through this list and mm -hmm. I was going through them, clicking on each one, and half of them were like, This this produced a version of memory for in 1980 for Von Mauer. Yeah clothing company in in 1872 or whatever <laughs> yeah, it was it was really they, like... they created one version of shoots and ladders for <laughs> you know, like whatever Lots of really weird so they get, they get like an entry that. because they have a a publishing credential but it's but it's just like i mean this one here 66 viable okay fine and started a society project uh based in apparently based in nottingham in my own country but I've never heard of this. I've never heard of this. I mean, what do they do? RPGs? Do they do board games or what? I mean, I got n no idea. So when you start this list, trying to look at 114 pages worth of yeah. unknown pages, it's just like, yeah, you knew we were on a uh, <laughs> bit of a dark side and trying to do this. So, yeah, I mean, that's that's the deal with the list. It is highly subjective. There's a reason I don't think a lot of people do 
small publishers. I mean, some people lately who I've seen on channels do like their favorite publishers. They've just gone their favorite publishers, you know, and I'll bet that they have not even tried to attempt small and indie publishers because I think they just get into the same minefield as us. But I mean, this would have been simple if we'd just done my favorite publishers. Right. Yeah. But, but the majority of them, I mean, I, I, don't know, I, I probably would have seen Emperor S4 and Red Raven on there you know as consistent and stuff like that but i mean you'd start getting into the bigger publishers at that point so and again i think our list would just basically be one giant crossover if nothing Eventually, else yeah yeah uh, yeah well. but i think i think if nothing else this is we tackled something else no one else did we started a conversation someone else can finish as far as the parameters yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh comments are going to be bad after this i mean i mean <laughs> I mean, for starters, if you're going to comment on this after the fact, tell us what publishers we haven't thought of, but also what's your definition of small? And if yes. we're going to be nice and say that there's a category for medium, where's the where's the cutoff between small and medium? You know, I think that's going to get some interesting debate. But yeah, there were so many different ways that you could do it. And I think it's just got to be a case of, here's what I consider small, run with it. But yeah. if nothing else, we're talking about publishers that you probably either haven't heard of as much or you don't hear of as much, you know, or, the, or like, you know, or are just starting off, you know, like, oh, they're new. They've only done a few games. We hope that they go further. Yeah. As mm -hmm. opposed to the big conglomerates that we already know exist and already love a lot of their games. I mean, case in point. So you know, first, <laughs> first half of that, uh, was it? How many shows? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, that's five Calyx squares. That's all Fantasy Flight. So, granted, they got big box games, but still, that's five to Fantasy Flight. There's at least two for Portal, one and a bit for A, two for AEG, no, three for AEG. So, I mean, you know, the, the big publishers have got a lot of games we like, but that's because they're producing a bucket load of games. So. Yeah. They have yeah, the resources, that. too. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And certainly with things like Red Raven that I mentioned before, to sort of go, right how many resources do you have for like one man bands, but somehow you make it work? I don't know. And yes, I know I'll get, I'll get round to herbaceous at some point, even if I have to buy it myself, you know, <laughs> it can't be that expensive. Probably only like 10, 15 quid around my area or something. I'll have to try. Uh, well, that's interesting actually, before we sign off feudum, who made feudum, you know, the big giant monstrosity yeah. Euro game, because, I yeah because I've only played it once, but I really enjoyed it. Despite thinking, "Oh my god, we're going to be here for like five hours playing this game," but who made it? So, oh, Odd Bird. That's why everybody's been going on about Odd Bird this whole thing. So I thought, like, <laughs> will Odd Bird make the list? And it's like, who's Odd Bird? <laughs> because they've only I've made it. few them. The well, they... color palette of that box is just so garish and off-putting that I don't even want to open it. <laughs> I like the uh, color palette on it though. It's just something a bit more psychedelic and different. It's a bit like what Dinosaur Island kind of did for me. It was just something a bit yeah, different. Yeah, same thing. I don't have an interest in opening that box either. <laughs> Dinosaur Island or that. Yeah. It's like it's oh, like but... someone vomited all over the cover of it. But I mean, that, you know, for as heavy a Euro game as it was, I was like, you know, just gave me so much good stuff to look at. I mean, if, if my mate didn't already own this, I would own it. But my mate is probably the only person I'll end up playing this with, apart as well as a couple of others that we know. So it's like, look, two of us cannot own this game because we will never both play it. So it's just like that big of a monster. But yeah, I mean, I really enjoyed this one when I played it. I want to play it some more, but it's just a bit like, this is kind of like my Euro TI4 game. You know, TI4, yeah. you'll play once in a blue moon if you're lucky. Well, this is going to be that same sort of thing. But yeah, I mean, they're small. Clearly a small publisher, but I can't exactly go, oh, this is one of my favorite publishers based on one game. <laughs> so that doesn't kind of work. Well, I mean, you could do it based on two games. And an expansion. <laughs> and an expansion. Hard to say. And, I mean, I like, yes, I like artwork in Dinosaur Island. What you get at? So, <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, I get why some people would look at something like Feudum and Dinosaur Island like you, like you did and go, oh, my God, that's like far too garish. It definitely is a unique style, but I guess, I guess when I see so many euros just be beige, you know, beige euros and boring little colors, to get a, a bit of color is actually kind of nice. It's what makes me feel so bad about brass, because <laughs> I look at that cover, I look at the board, and I think you've taken one of the most dreary bits of history from like UK history, and you've somehow made it look this good. 
get away from economic games and put your artwork into something fun, you know, then I'll be happy. <laughs> but, but again, I don't know. It's kind of weird. Anyway, hour 45, we better start wrapping this up. <laughs> I think I've wrapped it on too much. But, yeah, let us know what you think on the, the publishers. Let us know what you think on the criteria. Obviously, don't forget to check out Ryan and Bethany on their own channel because, you know, but they, we're not going to be talking too much about what small, medium, and large publishers on there, but plenty enough games, but particularly if you want to hear them talk a lot about steeped games. <laughs> <That's the fact. laughs> Exclusively, we just review those two games over and over again. Over and over, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just, that's it. It's just those two games over. Don't let the thumbnails fool you. It's just like, you thought you were talking about this, but oh, look, Chai again. <laughs> Gotcha. It was. De- they def- they definitely need you as like the ambassador for their like future games or something so, <laughs> to publicize them around. But yeah, all right, that's it from us. We'll catch you guys later. I hope it was fun, despite the list being a little bit on the random side. But uh, yeah, we'll catch you guys later. All right, okay. It's only Bye, a game. Everybody. It's only a top five list. We're trying it. Bye-bye oh, we are tried it. Bye bye for now.